On Thursday's episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, it is time for a breakdown of the biggest fantasy surprises so far. We're almost at that one month mark, so it's time to break it all down for y'all. And of course, big time bets. Let's get this money. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hockey heads, degenerate gamblers, and fantasy fanatics, welcome back to your show. It is the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, alongside your co-hosts, Mr. Steel Roden and your boy, Big Flip Livingstone. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We see and appreciate you. Thank you for doing that. And honestly, we wouldn't be here without y'all. But today's episode, we're trying to pay you back a little bit. Break down what we've seen so far one month in, Steel. Biggest surprises. Most of them good. Some of them not so good because there have been some surprises on the bad side of the yeah. fantasy realm, Steel. We're going to get to our big-time bets because if you haven't been paying attention, those are starting to heat up as well. Big, big episode for Thursday, Steel. We got a loaded 13-game board to take some bets at. But let's start with these biggest surprises because... As usual, you and I have not collaborated. I don't know what your surprises are. You don't know what mine are. Something tells me we're going to have one or two of the same. But yeah. please, let's kick it off. I've got five. You've got five. Let's get right to it. Yeah, let's get right to it indeed. And I've got three big good surprises and mm-hmm. two bad surprises for okay. today's episode. First guy that I really want to talk about who, to me, I think we might have uh, discussed him a little bit in the offseason, maybe having a bounce back season as a defenseman. And that's Eric Carlson of the San Jose mm, Sharks. Yep. What a big surprise he has been so far for the first month of this new NHL season. Eric Carlson, nine goals, six. He's actually second in the league for most goals this season so far, right behind Connor Impressive. McDavid. Absolutely insane. But yep. he's got 15 points on the season. Nonetheless, 32 shots. I believe his shooting percentage is like 28.5%. Obviously, yeah. That's going to come down eventually, but the fact that it's at 28% for Eric Carlson is phenomenal. Nine blocks, six hits. He only had 35 points last season. He's pretty much 45% of the way Mm -hmm. of what he had last year. And the fact that, you know, I was looking at uh, the different fantasy leagues that I'm in. The fact that he was drafted 235th in our fantasy fan base fantasy league. He was drafted 194th in my other fantasy league. I don't know if you saw, but Win Unlimited tagged us on a Twitter DM. Uh, he sent yep. us a picture of where he drafted Eric Carlson literally today. 22nd and, round or something? Yeah, 20th round, 21st round. Yeah. Absolutely unbelievable. Biggest steal of the draft, it seems like, right now, especially as a defenseman. So that's my first big surprise. I also got to show you some love because our bold predictions or bounce back candidate or episode, one of those – You had Eric Carlson on your list as one of those guys that you could take a flyer on late in your draft. You're mentioning Win Unlimited, the name of the team that did take a risk, a flyer on him in our own league draft, paying off dividends. Most interesting with Eric Carlson, before we move on very quickly, is now the San Jose Sharks have an interesting little trade piece on their hands. And if Eric Carlson makes a move at any point during this season to a real contender, all of a sudden his fantasy value is going to go even higher oh, because, yeah. hey, if he can get get it done right now with the ragtag crew that the San Jose Sharks have, <laughs> although Timo Meyer is picking up steam, he could maybe do big things on a competitor – His old team, the Ottawa Senators, is where I want to take a look at my first big surprise steal because heading into this season, you know, I don't think a lot of people pegged Shane Pinto to be second in Calder scoring one month into the year. (laughs) And I want to say this about Shane Pinto. Six goals and one assist, most of those coming, having limited opportunity down the lineup in Ottawa. Now, all of a sudden, with that injury um, to the second center, why is it drawing a blank in my mind here? Please help me out. Josh Norris. Thank you, Josh Norris being out. (laughs) His opportunity is going to go through the roof. And if you look at how many shots a night this guy takes, he's really only shooting the puck once or twice a night. If he can shoot the puck a little bit more, I think this fantasy surprise deal could go even bigger. And the fact that he is filling that spot for Norris, thank you for helping me out drawing a heavy blank there. (laughs) 
filling in there with the Brinkett now and Giroux on that second line. I think this is a player that you have to keep your eye on if you haven't already gone out there and added him because I'm seeing that ownership percentage tick up and up and up and up. So Shane Pinto, big surprise for me. Maybe not so much for Ottawa Senators fans, but for fantasy cats in general, I would say that's a good surprise. Yeah, he's been absolutely fantastic. Like I mentioned a couple, I think last week I picked him up in two of my fantasy leagues, the one the of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey mm -hmm. one, as well as another one on ESPN. So nice. I'm looking at him right now. He's only owned at 25.5%. So he's still yeah. available in more than 75% of leagues out there. Yeah. He, he has gone up over the last week, uh, up 10% on uh, his own <laughs> value. So mm -hmm. Jane Pinto, another surprise to a lot of people, but... Again, the talent's there, and he's going to get mm -hmm. the opportunity That's uh, just because it. of the injury to Josh Norris, the second Thank guy you. that I'm looking at right now for a big Hit. surprise on the season. Jesper Bratt of the mm. New Jersey Devils has been absolutely fantastic, yeah. and I would have never guessed it would have been Bratt leading the team with 15 points ahead of Nico Heischer, Jack Hughes, a couple mm. of other young studs as well. He's been absolutely fantastic for the Devils. Four goals, 12 assists. 27 shots on net. He's not going to get you a ton of blocks or hits. That's not his game, but mm. he's been absolutely fantastic everywhere else along the ice. And I don't think anyone would have expected him to be leading the Devils uh, to the great start that they've been on. And they're 7-3-0 and oh, leading the Metropolitan Division right now. So Devils looks a little bit more serious than uh, than they were last year. We talked about that as well yep. uh, with the, you know, the return of Mackenzie Blackwood getting mm -hmm. Vitek Vanacek, a couple of other decent yep. uh, defensive in the offseason as well. And mm -hmm. we talked about it, Hughes and Heischer just being healthy, remaining healthy is the biggest key for this Devils team. They've yeah. been healthy so far. They're not leading the team, but they've been uh, they've been producing nonetheless. And Jesper Brad again, uh, has been absolutely fantastic. So a big surprise for me. I actually think some of that ability for Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes to have the pretty good starts that they've had is because of how hot Jesper Bratt has been. These yeah. teams that are coming at the New Jersey Devils, now all of a sudden the New Jersey Devils have a pretty balanced attack. Andre Palat really haven't, hasn't done anything. That was another one of their offseason additions. So this team could really be pretty dangerous offensively. You got Dougie Hamilton and Damon Severson on the back end, two good offensive guys. The question I think always remains with how far is this Devils team going to go steal? It's in the blue paint. And now all of a sudden, both those goalies turning it around a little bit, especially Vitek Vanacek. So those are all interesting fantasy pieces. But, you know, talking about Jesper Bratt, he is at the top of the list for fantasy value on the New Jersey Devils right now. And for good reason, he is on a torrid hot start. I'm going to talk about a couple of goaltenders right after the break that are on hot starts, one in Vegas, one for the Philadelphia Flyers that we got to talk about. Both yeah. of them big surprises, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. But we also got to pay these bills and talk about our friends at betonline.net. Betonline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new NBA season all season long, just like Steele and I, you can find all of your latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every single game. As always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. It is the fastest and easiest way for you to check in on all of your favorite games, events, all the way from MLB to MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. For your next listen, though, go check out Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts just like this podcast right here. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode. Flip, I'll throw it right back over to you. I know you want to talk about a couple of goalies out there. Yeah. I also have a goalie on my list, mm. but I'll throw it over to you first. Thank you very much. Logan Thompson coming into this season with massive opportunity with Robin Leonard going down right before the season starts with a long-term injury. We didn't know who was going to grab the cage in Vegas. It was going to be a rotating cast of let's see what you got. And so far... Aiden Hill at backing up Logan Thompson isn't a terrible combination for the Vegas Golden Knights, who are, I believe, still in first place in that division. Oh, yeah. Logan Thompson has now been on a three-game heater. 
two of them against pretty good teams in the Washington Capitals and Toronto Maple Leafs. I understand the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. That was a shutout, but it's the Ducks. Three games in a row, he's looking really good. 5-2-0. and 1.73 goals against. That's the fourth best in the NHL. 938 save percentage. That's the fifth best in the NHL. Do I think he's able to continue at this rate? Probably not. But right now, he is definitely worth a look in a lot of formats, and he is definitely one of the biggest surprises so far. Also, now in the mix for a Calder Trophy, hey, might be worth a little sprinkle on that Calder Trophy odds. We'll be getting to those kinds of bets later this month. Yeah, and Vegas on a five-game win streak as well. Logan Thompson, a big part of that. Jack Eichel, like I said, revenge mm -hmm. tour for him. Yep. That team's looking mighty solid right now. I think we might have... Uh, uh, not giving giving them the props they, they deserved before the season Agreed. started. But I know there's another goalie on your list. This might be the only player that we both have on our list for big surprises. Carter yeah. Hart. I'm, I'm not yep. gonna I'm in, I'm not gonna or I'll leave this pretty short because I know you want to talk about him, but the fact <laughs> that he's five oh and two, he's got a save percentage of nine forty three, two point mm -hmm. ten goals against average. He's looked absolutely incredible. I watched that overtime game against the New York Rangers the other day, you know Obviously, they lost uh, one nothing in overtime. He stopped like 32, 33 shots. He's been absolutely standing on his head. The, the entire organization, the entire roster has been a lot better than what we've seen in the, last, the past two years. Uh, John Tortorella is doing a fantastic job, it seems like. And I love his quote of him saying, like, I hate I hate looking at analytics. It's all about the <laughs> eye test and, and the gut feeling. So, yeah, I, I, I've been really surprised with Carter Hart. I know this hits home for you, so I'll, I'll – throw it over to you again <laughs> it, it hits home for me Steele, because unfortunately i went through a lot of hoops to get this guy on my team a number of years ago i traded assets to get free agent dollars to load up on this kid and i stashed him and i kept him and he just you know he looked real good to start and then faded and faded even worse last season and you know i had an opportunity to replace him with Vili huso in this offseason and as much as i like what i've seen from huso there's so much split there with nadelkovich and you've seen what Carter Hart has done, 5-0-2, the 2-10 goals against and the 9-43 save percentage, some of those metrics you mentioned. Look, the Philadelphia Flyers could have been this whole topic right here, Steele, as one of the big yeah. surprises. But I think we're spot on with talking about Carter Hart as one of the biggest surprises. Look, second overall, second round draft pick, 48th overall. That's pretty high for a goalie these days. He has looked absolutely sensational on the come up throughout his career and then faded. And now all of a sudden he is back to what he is doing. The Philadelphia Flyers playing some pretty good defense in front of him. Yes, I'm heated because I got rid of him. <laughs> but for those who hung on, speaking of hanging on, Marc-Andre Fleury, you hung on to him so far this year. Good things because yeah. now he's on a heater. Anyway, Carter Hart, definitely one of the biggest fantasy surprises so far. Yeah, he's been absolutely fantastic for the Flyers organizations. Just speaking about goalies, I don't have these two on my list, but I think I need to get this out, get this off my chest. Please. I have both Thatcher Demko and Ooh. Jordan Bennington. Mm. And uh, in a categorical league right now, my goals against average is at oh. 10. And the save percentage is below mm. 700. So Yeah, that's uh, dodgy. That's I, dodgy. Uh, I'm not really sure what to do, especially with Bennington <sighs> letting five goals in on nine shots. Back to Demko losing 6-2 or 5-2 last night to the Devils yeah. or the other night. So yep. it's been a tough week goalie-wise for me. I'm not really sure what to do. Maybe we could talk about that on another episode. But... I think we're going to have to, but thank you for alluding to the St. Louis Blues struggles because if you don't yeah. mind, I'm going to talk about them as one of my surprises very quickly. Because when you look at the lineup, that includes the likes of Jordan Cairo, Robert Thomas, Vladimir Tarasenko, Braden Shen, even guys on the back end like Tori Krug and Justin Falk, who we know can get it done offensively. Yeah. And then you take a look at the struggles that they're having, not only in the standings, but to score goals. Let me hit you with that. The St. Louis Blues have scored the least goals in the NHL this season by any other team. They are rock bottom at 19 goals scored. And that is my biggest surprise here, Steele. Those guys, Jordan Cairo. Um, sorry, two, three goals and no assist, minus 13 on the year. Yeah, he's Not been good invisible. enough. Big surprise. Robert Thomas, only one goal. I know he's got to shoot more. Nine shots, not good enough. This yeah. is a surprise for me, Steele, because I was really expecting the Blues to be right there in the mix again. Who knows? They might. It's very early. But yeah. my biggest fantasy surprise on the bad end this time is how shockingly bad the St. Louis Blues have been offensively. 
Yeah, they have been bad. And I was, they're not on my list, but I've been surprised because they would go out and win their first three games of the season. Now they're on a five game skid as well. So go. big surprise there. Um, yeah, just a lot of their superstar players, a lot of their talented players not showing up. Bennington has not been great the last three or four games as not well. Too. So it's been, it's been a tough stretch for them. Hopefully they can turn it around. I believe they can turn it around. Me too. Uh, One goal, though, at minus 11 for Ryan O'Reilly is also not good it, enough. It, All it of their bad. key pieces, like you said, are not being are not living up to yeah, potential. Yeah, it, it's not working out for them right now. Hopefully they can I, – I believe they can turn it around, though. Nonetheless, yeah, what else my first player that is on the bad, th- bad end of surprises right now, uh, Jonathan Huberto has just mm. not been the same player okay. that I thought he would. And I, I understand going to a new – well, A, going to a new country, but going to a new team – uh, you know, playing for the Calgary Flames a little bit. It's obviously a big difference from playing from the Florida Panthers. He's only got one goal, four assists on the season, 14 shots, eight hits, six blocks. Um, he's at, you know, I think he's like just in the top 200 fantasy points wise this season. Mm. I thought he would have been a lot better, especially for a guy who get, who's getting, who got drafted uh, average in the first two rounds. And he's only got five points to show for it in the first 10, 11 games for the Calgary Flames. It's just not good enough, in my opinion. No. Jonathan Huberto needs to be a lot better. And, you know, they just – they were up 4-2 against the Seattle Kraken. They lost 5-4. Nikita Zadorov, which, you know, to my surprise, he's the one coming out and talking about this. It's like, hey, yeah. we're we're one of the oldest teams. We're one of the most uh, veteran teams in the league right now. We can't go out up 4-2 and lose 5-4 to a young team like the Kraken. So – uh, it's just yeah, that back they have all this please, talent. Please, let's not talk too deeply about that because if you remember <laughs> the screenshot I sent you from this morning, I just that just blown remember. lead actually cost me eleven hundred dollars. So thank you very much oh, on a no. six out of seven parlay for fun. I slapped a hundred down, seven picks, six out of seven cashed, and that was the one that burned me for eleven hundred dollars. We can share that for fun later. But thanks for bringing that up. I really, really appreciate it. Do you have any I, other surprises that are really going to make the me? The screenshot was the screenshot was like cut in half. I couldn't see the bottom of it, so I oh my know bad, I'll resend it. Was. Yeah, it, it was one good. pick wrong on a seventeen oh, parlay, geez. and it was the Flames that blew it for eleven hundred. But I believe you have one more surprise. Yeah, I have one more surprise. We have a bunch of big time bets to get to. I say we go to break. We'll wrap with our biggest surprises and our bets. If you're okay with that, Steele, we're keeping this bad by short and sweet. Yeah, of course. Real quick, though, again, we got to thank everyone out there for making Mm -hmm. the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen. For your next listen, again, check out Locked On Sports Today Podcast. Biggest stories, instant reactions, uh, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Yeah, my last big surprise flip. Mm. Uh, I'm, I, I think you'll definitely have to agree with this. Marit Sider has been awful. Yeah. Fantasy wise, fantasy wise. Yeah. Fantasy wise um, disappointment. Yeah. Fantasy wise, big disappointment. Uh, other than, you know, if we're just talking his actual game play, then he's mm-hmm. been pretty good. He's been solid, but nothing offensively to show for. He's got zero goals, only two assists, 17 shots, 20 hits, 23 blocks. So if you're in one of those categorical leagues mm. where you have those blocks, hit shots, yeah, he's still producing some sort of uh you know stats for you in those categories but nonetheless as a defenseman the fact that he's coming off i think he had 50 points last year in 82 games he pulled the he played the entire season zero goals in, in, in two assists is just not great from yeah. um you know the second year nhl or right now on the blue line for the red wing so big surprise for me yeah. Marie Sider only having two points And thank you for bringing this up because you're making my segues into my own topics very, very easy. (laughs) Thank you for doing that. I I passed on a lot of very good players in a couple of drafts because I was so high on Moritz Sider heading into this season. And I think the book is far from out on this player. We know he is still going to be a long-term solid fantasy stud and NHLer. Slow start. I literally passed on guys like David Pasternak to take Marit Sider, and I took a lot of heat for that. And my last surprise of this season so far is the Boston Bruins, and in specific, all of these secondary fantasy pieces that are now valuable on the Boston Bruins because of how good the entire team has been. Hampus Lindholm, three goals, eight assists. David Krejci, two goals, six assists. How about even Taylor Hall, five goals, two assists. Going into this season, I think other than once Marshawn was healthy, 
Bergeron was healthy and Pasternak and maybe the goalies, I don't think you were taking many Boston Bruins high up there. And now all of a sudden, you've even got value in guys like A.J. Greer out of nowhere and Charlie Coyle. Hats off to the Boston Bruins and hats off to their balanced attack, their yeah. balanced fantasy value. That's my biggest, one of my biggest surprises because there is a lot of fantasy value on this team steal. Oh, wait, they lead the league in goal scoring as well at 44. That's the highest total so far. You can't not like what's been going on in Boston, but I'm surprised by how good it's been going. Look, it seems like you, this, it's, it's really seemed like this was the year that they were going to fall off just a little bit. But nonetheless, the Bruins organization, the Bruins front office, they go out and get their, uh, their new coach uh, after firing Bruce Cassidy. They've done everything right, uh, and those players are showing why they're still top dogs in the NHL right now. I, to be honest, like after passing up on David Pasternak in the draft and mm. just watching him the way he started, he's gonna be he's gonna be a top yeah. first round draft pick for the next five years, in my opinion. He's that good, and yeah, we and must, I'm, I, I, must I regret. I yeah, regret hey, not picking him. We come on this show and we like to pump our own <laughs> tires sometimes and give us the credit where credit's due. Hashtag Cole Perfetti, hashtag Seth Jarvis. But listen up. We also will come on and let you guys know when we mess up. And we have definitely missed the boat on the Boston Bruins. But yeah, we're not missing the boat on making money these days because Steele and I are both starting to pick up some serious steam. I said that before, but now it's happening. Make sure you check out the Twitter nightly, daily for all of our posts updated odds updated records and otherwise and while you're at it make sure you smash that subscribe button drop us a follow a comment a review we appreciate feedback and we're trying to get better for y'all out there every single day so that you can make this money alongside us speaking of which steel please if you don't mind i would like to hear your first pick of this thursday night because it is a loaded 13 game board and i have a couple of tasty treats here because i think i'm gonna have my first perfect night of the year that's how confident i'm feeling look it's a big uh, big schedule of uh, games on thursday night i'm starting off with the rangers and bruins under six goals at plus 100 i'm starting a little bit spicy on this one but look the rangers have been in some low scoring games we just saw them win one nothing against the flyers in overtime uh, other than that, they've been, again, they've been on some uh, bottom ends of some low-scoring games. I don't have the schedule up right in front of me for the Rangers, but the Bruins, like you said, the top uh, scoring team in the NHL right yes. now. Linus Allmark, you know, he had a rough game uh, against Pittsburgh. They still ended up getting the win, but nonetheless, Jeremy Swayman, Igor Shosturkin have been absolutely playing out of their mind so far this season. I'm betting on the goalies for this one. Under six goals. I'm seeing like a 3-2 win. I'm not sure for who because both of these teams are really, really good. But I'm seeing like a 3-1, 3-2 win uh, in this game. So under six goals at plus 100. I love your first pick. And I think I spoke about this the other day if a couple of times. I've been hitting on some of these over-unders because last year I was making the money on the player props. And this year, that just hasn't been hitting the same. So I've been switching it up a little bit, trying to find these trends, trying to go to the numbers. And my first one of the day, and I'm trying to find an updated odd for y'all, but I'll tweet it out because I'm not getting any. Carolina at Tampa Bay. Speaking of under steel, I'm loving this spot for an under 6.5 total. I think the last, actually, I know, looking at the last 17 games for the Carolina Hurricanes, 12 of which have gone under the total. And eight of the last 10 between these two teams, under the total, I'm going to hammer the under 6.5 here tonight between two teams that play each other very, very tight in the Hurricanes and Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, that's going to be a good game as well. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure I would take the under this game. I'm not going to lie. Andre Vasilevsky mm. has looked weak this season. It's true. He's not look great. You know, Maybe I've seen countless for a times. back? He yeah, he could be due for bounce back, but I, I like I've seen I've seen countless games so far of the Tampa Bay Lightning, and he's let in the first shot on goal many many times. He mm. let in three goals only on twelve shots or on fifteen shots against the Senators. Yeah, he still he hasn't the been win, good. but he has not been great. That's why I've been saying you, Igor Shosturkin is the best goaltender in the league mm. right now. But nonetheless, my second pick, I'm taking the Minnesota Wild on the puck line against the Seattle Kraken. They just won. Four to one against the Montreal Canadiens. The uh, Mark Andre Fleury is on a four-game heater right now. He's won his last four games True. in a row. Um, 
the, the Minnesota Wild are turning it on right now. They started off very slow, mm-hmm. but we knew that this was going to happen, that they were going to turn things around like good teams do. I'm betting on the puck line for the Minnesota Wild. The odd for that is not out yet, but we will let you know about it. Always updated odds coming at you right before puck drop when we do tweet out our picks every single night, so stay tuned for that. Also, trends are usually your friends, people. Kings on the money line, eight out of the last 10, they have taken points from the Chicago Blackhawks. I called the Chicago Blackhawks bubble being burst the other night. The Islanders burst it pretty neat and tidily, 3-1. I'm going to say the Chicago Blackhawks go on a little slide here with a couple of their key veteran pieces going down in Tyler Johnson and Seth Jones. Kings on the money line, decent, minus 150 odds so far. I do have that one. That's not my lock of the night steal. If you're okay, I'm going to ream off my lock of the night because what I have seen from the Seattle Kraken so far has been solid. And no, I'm not going to go against you and take the Seattle Kraken (laughs) because I am feeling what's going on with the Minnesota Wild. But what I've seen from both these teams, Steele, is a lot of high-scoring games. And what I've seen from the Seattle Kraken is Matty Beneers is worth the price of admission. And I'm telling you, this kid is real, real good. Five goals, four assists in 11 games this season. He's almost at a point-per-game player. He basically is a point-per-game player in his 20-plus games in the NHL now. I'm loving what he's doing. And yeah, Marc-Andre Fleury's been better. Wild have been better, but they're still giving up some goals, still giving up some muffins. So I'm going to say Matty Beneers, he's in on the action tonight, whatever Seattle gets. Give me the Matty Beneers anytime assist. That's my lock of the night steal. He's on fire right now. Five points in five straight games. He's been good. He's been good for the uh, sorry for the uh, Seattle crack and Matty Beneers has. And uh, thank you. Another guy, another rookie that you're talking about. We've been mm-hmm. we've been highlighting some rookies out there because they've been doing a lot of the work for their respective organizations. My lock of the night, though, I'm taking the Golden Knights on the money line against the Ottawa mm. Senators minus mm. 140. That's my lock. Look. Like I mentioned, the Vegas Golden Knights are on a five-game win streak right now. The the Ottawa Senators have lost their last three, I believe. They've been in some close games. So I was thinking about taking the puck line. But like I Mm. said, they've been in some close games. They lost four to three against the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning uh, just a couple days ago. Uh, So I was thinking about the puck line. But the Ottawa Senators always seem to keep keep the games very interesting down the stretch into the third Mm. period. So I'm going to play it a little bit more safe with my lock of the night. Golden Knights on the money line, minus 140. Ottawa has looked shaky. We see our friends from the Locked On Sens podcast tweeting out, you know, that this game (laughs) must be as almost a must win, a must win game for the Ottawa Senators. Only nine games in. They're at the bottom of the heap in the Atlantic Division, but that really doesn't mean much because they're four points out of being in second. But what we have seen from some of these other teams in the Atlantic, we know this deal. They've gotten better. So the Ottawa Senators alongside the Toronto Maple Leafs better wake up pretty quickly or else it's going to be too late to get yourself into good positioning and you're going to be fighting for a bubble spot, which no one wants to see happen. Anyway, feel in the bets, my friend. Take us away. All right. I got to thank everyone out there for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the follow button. Once you do, you'll get all the latest episodes of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Time. You don't want to miss out on any of this hot content Flip and I are throwing your way. Mm -mm. With that being said, thank you again for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.